Good day, fellow investors. I continue with my analysis on plant-based food stocks that are really in a hot trend or have been over the last years. I did Beyond Meat. You can check that video in the link in the description below. And many comments asked for Tattooed Chef, another plant-based stock that has been very very hot especially on youtube so i hope i give you value with my perspective on investing in such stocks if you get value smash that like button what i want to discuss is of course the bull and bear thesis but then discuss the investment strategy i really think that's key when it comes to investing in such spec stocks that have gone public through a special purpose investment vehicle and when the stock went public, the stock was already pretty high. This is the spec. Then the stock appreciated. And I think it went public around the 15th of October when the acquisition was completed and everything. And since then, actually, the stock didn't do really, really well. The initial investors that bought the spec at 10, that invested at the beginning, those did really well. But the retail investors haven't been as happy as the others. And there are some risks. It's a $1.6 billion market capitalization. Keep in mind that number for valuation and investing purposes. The price earnings ratio according to Google is 32, but that's totally wrong. So be careful there too. Also something to discuss. Ron here says it's a 10 bagger in the making. Great product, 60% growth. 10 price to sales ratio. So now that is really good. 10 price to sales ratio. Profitable? It's not. Even if it looks like it is, it has a great balance sheet. That is, yes, growing industry. Okay, that can be debated. Great management. That's something we will know over the next 5 to 10, 20 years. And what are your thoughts when? Well, here are my thoughts. Just looked at the company, started with the investment page. For those that don't know it, what does the company do? It produces ready-to-cook bowls, zucchini spirals, rice cauliflower, smoothie bowls, uh, pizza crust, and other frozen food that goes into the frozen food section when you go and buy in the United States. They are focused on growing in the United States, very important for later, what we'll discuss later. Then I look for the investment presentation. First, I fell on the SEC filings, which are very, very interesting and pecu peculiar. And if you want to dig deeper into business, always look at the filings because that's the real data that discusses what's going on behind the business. So one of the initial investors, if I understood it correctly, has been selling 2 million shares. That's normal. It's a spec. So they bought, invested. They need a return on investment. So I'm neutral on that. But there have been some other issues. They are investing 37 million in a tortilla factory for expanding into Mexican food. So everything is focused on growth, focused on growth in capacity. But we have already have the first accounting issue where they allocated operating expenses instead of product cost of goods sold expenses. They have changed that, but the gross margin is not 26% anymore. Now it's 12%. The CFO has resigned just prior to this. So there will always be this accounting, let's say it's a growing company startup practically just a few years. And as they expand, there will always be these issues. But that's something very important to watch. When it comes to these companies, you have to watch where the cash is flowing, not the profits, the cash, how it goes. Of course, what are the profits? If there is the potential for reaching profitability, now the gross margin fell 50%. And that's one let's say, issue to really watch carefully over time. Despite the change in accounting, let's call it that way for now, they still forecast 60% revenue growth to 235 million in 2021. And it's really focused on growth. It's a growth company. So from small sales on the Tattooed Chef 
brand, they have really, really exploded in 2019. Many new products expanding 2020, 148 million in sales. Keep in mind, people were staying at home. So these products really, really exploded. We'll have to see if they will be able to reach the same levels in 2021 and beyond. Their plan is to reach 500 million by 2023 in sales and as a growth stock if they reach this and the valuation price to sales stays around 10 on the 1.6 billion 500 billion that's a 5 billion market capitalization on an equal valuation on 500 million in sales but we have to see whether the market will be willing to pay the same price to sales valuation in the future it's a family owned business sam galetti and his daughter that is the actual tattooed chef even if there has been a short report discussing whether this is true or not nevertheless they have also another business which is let's say diversifying them and that's something that we also have to discuss later in the strategy the short report and discussing how the owner went for cash at the ipo not more stocks despite losing a lot of value if he would have go gone for the stock. So also something to think about when it comes to your portfolio allocation that Galetti went for the cash, not for the stocks. But their guidance, gross margin, this is already cut in half. This is already cut in half. So we have to really be careful whether they will reach this guidance in the future because this might be something that a retail investor prices in 1 billion in sales 20 percent of ebitda that's 200 million of profitability okay depreciation there are already some investments so let's say 100 million in profits but that still gives you just a 15 price earnings ratio five years down the road and then they should grow even higher if we take a look at the current profitability they are not making much money they are actually losing money and they are selling their products at the cost of goods sold so they are really selling these premium products at the cost of making it and that's an easy way to grow more about distribution in a moment the balance sheet looks great 185 million dollars in cash so a lot of investments coming ahead they burn about 10 million per quarter so they have still a lot of time ahead to do that keep in mind dilution if they burn the cash before reaching profitability there will be more dilution so if we go back on the 100 million of expected profits by 2026 if there is more 50 100 percent dilution coming ahead from new stock issuances that's then again already a price earnings ratio of 30 and keep in mind especially for strategy that we'll discuss later that will conclude this video with keep in mind the sensitivity of the volatility with the stock price and the fundamentals with these fast growing stocks it's all about sensitivity on better than expected news or lower than expected results extremely important to understand if we look at their operational summary they source the raw material from italy they have some vegetable production there then they ship it to the US when they do the value added production, inventory control, they expand on the number of products, really huge expansion, trying to increase those sales by doing as much as they can. And they enter into these deals of distribution because their goal is only growth, growth, growth and growth. Also, they are now a national brand, so growth is the focus. But this is in contradiction. For example, I'm reading Zero to One from Peter Thiel and he says that be very careful with companies that aim for global or national immediate growth and distribution. Better invest in companies that find a small niche, local, make it very profitable and then expand on that profitably. That's what Peter Thiel says and he is the master of these kind of investments. Not the opposite of just spending as much money to enter these kind of businesses, these distributions and the suppliers and the resellers you need to pay them a lot to reach the scale and sales there 
with not making money, this can end badly. Ending badly means that, let's say they reach 500 million in sales and then somebody takes them over for 500 million. This is, let's say, amongst the worst case scenarios, which is 75% down from the current levels. That's a possibility. Of course, there are also the bull thesis and the upside. Another issue when I looked at the last report, 90% of sales is from free customers. Of course, they are working hard on diversifying this, but free customers, unprofitable, really low gross margins. So they are really trying to scale, but if they can't scale profitably, then you are in a pickle as a company. There is still the private label that is less and less of the revenue mix, but keep in mind, this is how they started and they are now expanding on the tattooed chef brand. I've listened to the last conference that they made with Jeffries. Keep in mind, Jeffries is a spec sponsor, so they are incentivized to talk to them and to promote them. Nevertheless, just a few comments, recent spec, Goal is mass market business, which can be extremely costly to do. High competition, of course, they will acquire, they will grow by acquisition and organic. Spending on marketing, entering all the distribution, national focus, more stores. And there was a good question, last question, probably that the poor guy here was allowed to ask one good question. And at the end he asked, what about the lifetime of the products? Because now you eat your broccoli, then you switch something and all these very new innovative products don't have a product lifetime, you switch to something else. And they said that it is in their DNA to constantly do new things. The company, the brand exists a few years and they have a DNA. So be very careful these people are really really great salespeople, and you have to also approach investing in this from that perspective Salespeople attract salespeople, so be ready to ride the wave on good sales and marketing but be very careful not to hold the bag as an investor reminds me of a video i did on the very good food company again a stock that was heavily promoted as sales and since i made a video it went up i received a lot of bad comments but since then it has been nothing but down down and down and this explains the riskiness of investing in such things if you invest make sure that you take your chips off the table when you make the money on the good sales but be wary of holding such growth promises. The link to this video will be in the description below as always. So that's part of the strategy. Sales, 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 growth, 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 promoting that with the market, trying to push that stock price higher and higher to get new money, to keep rolling the growth into eternity and maybe, maybe one day reach profitability which is extremely unlikely because with price to sales of 10, they need to 10x their sales and then have a profit margin of 10 just to get to a P ratio of 10. And of course, if they grow and now with the projected growth, we are at the price to sales of seven, if the market keeps giving that valuation, then good. But that's also very, very unlikely because it's hard to grow 50% a year. Easy on a small basis, but later it gets more and more difficult. And at some point someone will ask about profitability. Maybe they will reach 1 billion in sales, but with a 5% net profit margin, which is still remarkable for food stocks, then we are just at a P ratio of 30 in 20 30. And they are trying to disrupt this market, which is extremely competitive, high competition, which means thin margins. You can be hot for a while, but then very, very difficult to do that long term. So my message is really, really watch what's going on. What are they selling you? What's the reality? What's the profitability? Where the cash flow goes? And also watch market sentiment because don't be the bag holder when things go south. When they are small, you can still find these niches, these ways. But as you get bigger, the big guns come also competing with you. And that's something to be very, very careful with. Beyond Meat, great business that we discussed. 
But now, a few years in, there is so much competition. I looked a little bit at Oatly. Of course, great product, but so much competition now. There is really no barrier to entry. And if it is profitable, many will rush into the sector. So it's definitely not a stock for me. If they reach growth and the momentum continues, if they increase the profitability, the stock might do good, but if they don't, the stock will do terrible. So keep in mind that risk and reward and keep in mind the diversification strategy. The owning family is diversified. They've been selling a little bit, taking off the chips off the table. So keep that in mind also when it comes to your investment so that you don't lose too much if it goes south. Looking on the sector in general, I'm still very, very wary of investing in these hot stocks, but the sector is there and I'm trying to find the picks and shovels. So those companies that supply them all, that is where might, there might be the profitability. Have one in my portfolio. So that's doing well. Thanks for watching. Check the rest what I do, some other stock analysis and subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.